the, the term landscape architecture really begins um, with painting, actually, with um, this text on um, Italian painters, which it's, it's funny, it's, uh, the great painters of Italy, it's, it's, it's a text that's sort of irrelevant in art history, I mean, it's not like, you know, sort of a seminal text of art history, but it's incredibly um, important for landscape architecture in the field, because it's the first time that um, the term landscape and architecture are brought together. And the funny thing is, the painters in this book are not even Italian, most of them are, are Dutch. You know? <laughs> um, so, but it's sort of like, it, Italy is sort of acting as this place to develop a mode of landscape painting. And, and a mode of landscape painting that deals specifically with sort of architectural form in landscape and how they operate together. Um, basically, the sort of the, the point of the text is sort of um, to 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 really sort of look at a collection of paintings um, as uh, sort of tracing the theme of the relationship between building and the landscape. Of these you know, this is this is Versailles, um, and you know, that's one sort of model of, of landscape architecture is a kind of palace itself. You know, the, the, the sort of, um, the royal palace and the royal court, um, you know, especially sort of with the height of the, the sort of the French Empire and what he says and all of this, that, that there was a, um, an emergence of a, a kind of a practice of gardening that grew so large that it, in a way it sort of became landscape, it became landscape architecture. This is, this is Central Park. Central Park, like the sort of text on um, landscape architecture in Italian painting um, is a moment where the term landscape architecture is defined, um, or more specifically the term landscape architect, because this is the first project where um, a practitioner said, I am proposing this project as a professional landscape architect, and that was the, the Olmsted brothers. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the Olmsted brothers who designed Central Park were the first official landscape architect. Going, this is going back to the Roman Empire, um, you know, the kind of ruins of a sort of uh, form of a relationship between building and a field. There's, there's a relationship of space in, to, to sort of territory and the trajectory of power um, that, that one could sort of trace in something like the grid, right, or something like the, the, the plan um, of a city in terms of, um, you know, how streets define areas, how buildings define streets. Um, and, you know, I mean, this is broader than I can address here, but the sort of history of the Roman Empire is the history of a, a lot of sort of the beginnings of, of you know, what we recognize as sort of like a, a dense sort of urban form. And the, the grid is a way to sort of organize space. Um, it, it works very well as an abstraction of space, which is, you know, abstraction is <coughs> one, one tactic to sort of organize something. Um, across distances of space and time, right? So, you know, I mean, you, you could sort of take this plan and drop it almost anywhere in the world and, and be able to sort of govern and manage that area without ever physically setting your foot on it, which is something that, you know, we think of as now connected to technologies like the internet, but this is a sort of technology organization in space that enable the same thing. And, you know, when you draw this plan, you know exactly where to send your military, you know exactly where to send your goods. I mean, you guys could look at this right now. If you needed to ship you know, animals or, or fabric or food in and out of this, where would you, how would you do it? Hmm. Here's another landscape architect who's, who's working in a, in a way that um, is, you know, this project is, is very grounded in um, sort of grade changes and what might, you know, plantings and, and sort of what one might expect of a landscape architect. But what's happening here, this was in uh, MoMA, in the Rising Tides exhibit, and was a project commissioned for that. Um, it's, a, it's a project that Skate calls oyster architecture. So the, the project title itself is sort of playing off the idea of sort of inventing a new discipline. But um, effectively, what's going on here is that you have around New York, and we know this now because of Hurricane Irene, this became sort of like public, you know, municipal kind of um, um, basically boundaries that, that, that sort of um, became emergency zones because of Hurricane Irene, but there are um, sort of flood levels that are projected for the next 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 100, you know, 500 years. And the, the whole point of this project is, well, how do you deal with some of the, the areas, um, you know, along the waterfront edge? Um, how do you deal with those areas knowing that um, the, the levels of, of this sort of waterfront uh, are going to change drastically because of global warming? 
And a number of the, the projects and the MoMA exhibit sort of dealt with this in this sort of park kind of way or um, you know, sort of waterfront activity as leisure activity way. And what's interesting about Scape's proposal is that she's, she's proposing an oyster reef that's really sort of a new um, economic model, which is in a way not new to New York because in the 1800s, New York was one of the sort of capitals of, of oyster shucking. It was a major part of the economy. Um, and, you know, oysters were sort of shipped out. You know, there was places to eat oysters and were along the waterfront. Um, so, so she's looking at the, the sort of rising of the, the water level as an opportunity to bring back this economy. So rather than sort of creating um, new dams or new sort of like hard infrastructure, the oysters themselves become this kind of soft infrastructure. So she's operating in this lens, K-Orf is the, the principle of this this practice. She's operating in this way that's very grounded in um, sort of the, the ecological aspects of the discipline in terms of understanding uh, water life but in, and also specifically understanding how an oyster also filters, how the oyster shells sort of um, aggregate to act as reefs that actually sort of calm the water. But she's actually also dealing with the sort of social aspects of the whole economy along the waterfront. So that's just to give you an awareness of the kind of like range of practices that are going on in the landscape architecture. So um, with that, I'm going to close on this. Um, basically, there's sort of a series of things that we're going to do this week that um, are going to enable you guys to have the, the, the basic skills to sort of um, map out the campus in terms of the, the points of your sort of personal intersection with that, and then construct a sort of alternative tour in an alternative landscape architecture. Um, based upon your, your personal intersection with this campus. What you'll be doing sort of in the studio space here is really developing the site plan in the 3D software in Google SketchUp. That geo access link with the parcel access, go ahead and open that up. A lot of you already have it open. Um, you figured out you want to um, click to launch the parcel access map. Um, if you follow the instructions there, you can go to owner and just type Bard College and it will immediately, you know, it'll give you sort of, what, 32 matches and this is in the entire county. Um, I, so far, have dealt with the one on Library Road, but these, you know, parcel addresses may mean more to you guys than they do to me. Basically, this whole interface is just for this area, so, you know, if you guys are sort of working in this area, you guys can become the sort of experts in this interface, actually. Um, so if you go to Library Road, for example, it takes you right there. Basically, I haven't looked at your responses yet about the sort of locations, um, you know, where you spend your time on and off campus. But thinking about those locations, and we're going to deal with them more specifically with the, with the time assignment. Um, zoom in and out on this. Actually, before you do that, okay, so when you're, when you're on this, um, when you have a, a specific parcel selected, um, you can, when you have a specific parcel selected, you're clicking on, you can go to the identify button on the left. You guys see the identify button next to the navigation toolbar up at the left? And that takes you then on the bottom, on the, on the right hand side, um, below the parcel description, the bottom link says geo access link. If you click that, it opens up a new tab that zooms into that parcel and gives you even more information. Oh, you can so click on identify yeah. up there once you have something selected. Or you may not have it. Mm -hmm. You can zoom in, zoom out, yeah. or sort of scroll yeah. right yeah. to yeah. the yeah. camera roll. And people like this. Let's see. So you feel like our living rooms are here. Like Identify yeah. and then just like and see now it's highlighted. Okay. Um, click contours. Contours five feet. We're going to be dealing with those to get three dimensional. And you know you can still pan to your area here. You have a select scale tool. Use that so you're being precise. Select scales at the top of that navigation toolbar. You can go to uh, um, 100 foot scale, 400 foot scale. Uh, Determine the kind of area you want to deal with. And then when you've got this to a place where it looks like everything you might want to deal with is on that is on your screen, we're going to do print screen. However you do print screen on a Mac. And then take that print screen and open up Adobe Photoshop or whatever software you have for pasting in. I guess Adobe Photoshop would be the easiest for you guys. I like to use Microsoft Paint. Um, with, with Max, it saves uh -huh. it as a picture? 
which you can the open. The principal says there's a picture? Yes. Oh, perfect. So make sure you know where that picture is, email it to yourself, and then, and then you're done.